Chapter 1 The Cunning Serpent The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to convince the world he didn't exist. The first thing you need to know about the spiritual being called Satan, or the devil, is that you won't find him running around in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. He won't come at you with bared fangs dripping blood, no. He would much rather you fall for the lie that he is just a myth, and he doesn't exist at all. But if he can't convince you to swallow that, his next move will be to invade your life with all the hidden powers of hell, unseen but deadly. When Jesus walked the earth, he warned us that the devil has a three-pronged mission, to kill, steal, and destroy. But then he added these precious words, I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Yes, the devil is real and very powerful, but there is someone more powerful than he, Jesus, the Son of God. If you don't know him yet, my prayer is that by the end of this book, you will. In these pages, I want to share with you how to uncover all the different ways the devil tries to invade your life. I will peel back the mask he's hiding behind and disclose his true nature so you can be armed and ready when he comes. Together we will explore the reality of spiritual warfare and what it means to be a true soldier of the cross. That's military language for good reason. You and I are in a war, an unseen spiritual war that reaches all around us, all the time. This is a war of darkness versus light, good versus evil. I should know. For 25 years I fought on the side of darkness, climbing the ranks of Santeria, Palo Mayombe, and spiritualism until... I was the devil's number three man in New York City, casting spells and plunging whole neighborhoods into Satan's grip. You can read my testimony in the book, Out of the Devil's Cauldron. Big Dreams, Little People I want to take you back for a moment to your younger years and mine. I remember in my first grade class one spring afternoon in early May, my teacher sat us down in a circle and asked us the ultimate question. What do you want to be when you grow up? As I looked around the room in a panic, my heart racing a hundred miles an hour, I felt excited but afraid at the same time glancing around the classroom in a daze with the big bright windows and bright yellow painted walls what stood out to me that moment was our finest artwork displayed beautifully on the wall some of the artwork had little green hands while others featured drawings of family faces or a few stick figure family portraits as the teacher asked us this question one by one, our emotions ran high. The excitement in the room was so thick you could almost cut it, as little people with big dreams yelled out, Me first! Me first! In the background I could hear some of my classmates yelling at the top of their lungs, I want to be a police officer! I want to be an astronaut! Or... I want to be a fireman. On the other side of the room, another one yelled out, I want to be a doctor. Other classmates, their faces showing their confusion, didn't know what to say. Most of the girls agreed on being a nurse or a school teacher, or maybe even a ballerina. Surely that was a fun day in class. 
Nothing in our young hearts and minds was hoping and believing to become anything evil. Not even for a second or a moment in time did anyone yell out, I want to be a murderer. I can't wait to grow up and be a serial killer or a drug dealer. Nor did any of the girls in the class raise their hands and say, I want to be a prostitute and sell my body for money or be in a bad relationship and later on get murdered. None of us that day had shattered dreams or false hopes. As an ex-devil worshiper, I believe that the day you are born you start to die. You haven't yet said your first words. You haven't taken your first step, but as soon as you breathe your first breath, the devil has assigned a demon to chase after your life. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. John 10.10, 10, New International Version. From the first breath you take, the devil and his demon's plans are to keep you away from the truth of knowing where you came from, away from knowing that you were designed to have a relationship with your creator, Jesus Christ, and away from knowing that at the end of the journey, you are to return to where you came from, eternity with God. The plan of the enemy, whether you live in the penthouse or in the ghetto, is to distract every step of your life that was predestined by God to get you back home with him. There was a discussion in heaven before he gave you a birth date and sent you into time. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1.5 The Mind Satan's battlefield. Let me bring you into the enemy's kingdom and the strategy of the devil in a deeper way. The first thing the enemy attacks is your mind. The enemy knows that the battle is in the mind. And he knows if he can capture the territory of your mind, your thoughts, and the way you operate, he's got you in a stranglehold. The next move he makes will be to attack your soul. Now, this includes your mind, will, and emotions. Once he's got a person's soul, he will paralyze that person and bring them down to nothing. He has done this for centuries. He did it with Adam and Eve, and with their son Cain, who murdered his brother Abel. He did it with King Saul, who committed suicide and with Judas Iscariot, who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and later committed suicide. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies and minds to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Doing this will keep you in the perfect will of God and out of the hands of the enemy who wants to destroy your life. I believe that many Christians read the word but never act on it. And the danger of this is that we leave ourselves open, unguarded to the enemy's devices and entrapments and to the strongholds of the satanic world. If we want to become more than conquerors, reading the word is not enough. Acting on the word and applying it, mixing it with faith, 
will destroy the enemy's game plan for your life. The devil and his principalities, high-ranking evil spirits, who run the first and second heavens, and the junior ground-level demons who operate on earth today, have one mission, to capture your mind in a way that things bring you to the point of no return. The enemy is clever. He studies each person, their character, their personality, their bad habits, their strong points and weaknesses. Then he sets traps based on all the information he has gathered, whether that person is a believer in Christ Jesus or not. He knows how to wait for the right opportunity to open the spirit realm in your life. This is how he gets that entry point into your life. Baby Steps Toward Destruction For example, people like Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, and those who initiate mass shootings and the beheadings in the Middle East all have one thing in common. They hear voices in their heads. The enemy has stolen their characters, their personalities, their will, and emotions because he was able to break them down to nothing and strip them of their identity. When I was a general in the devil's kingdom myself, I was taught these tactics of how to strip a person down to nothing and steal their identity. The enemy knows how to set you up to take baby steps into the progression of your destruction. One of the most incredible psalms is Psalm 91. Listen to what verses 3 and 13 say. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, Shalt thou trample under feet? Psalms 91, 3 and 13. In these two scriptures, the fowler represents the devil. I want to pinpoint his entrapments, which are the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the dragon. These are tools the enemy uses to set you up. The one that is the most dangerous of all is the young lion. It is the setup that you don't see coming. This entrapment is smooth, under the radar, and it is the one opportunity described that you give the enemy to use against you. The young lion represents a small sin that you think you can control and put away whenever you want. For example, it could be watching porn movies or listening to dirty lyrics on a CD. It could be watching pornography on the internet. It could also be smoking a marijuana cigarette once in a while. Another example could be going to places that you know you shouldn't go as a believer. Let me give you the strongest warning someone could ever give you in your life. When you play around with or entertain a young lion, what you don't end up killing and putting away from you now will end up killing you. Because when it's full grown, it becomes the lion or dragon that Psalm 91 verse 13 describes. That's how the enemy gets his way to build strongholds in your life. Common gateways and portals. Here are some other gateways and portals the enemy uses to keep you away from God's best. Many of the things listed here are activities people engage in, even as children or teenagers, thinking they are just innocent fun. I'm here to tell you there is nothing innocent about them. Take part in any of the following, and you are playing with fire and propping the door wide open for the enemy's activity in your life. Mediums, psychics, fortune tellers. Tarot card readings, seances, horoscopes, paranormal phenomena, talking to the dead, seeking after ghosts, 
playing with Ouija boards, watching horror movies or television shows, listening to music with lyrics of profanity, murder, suicide, etc., pornography. These are the devil's weapons of mass destruction that he uses against humanity, without them even knowing it. Satan has a Ph.D. in capturing your imagination. Once he has a hold of that, he then takes control of your life and owns it. In his timing, he will take your life out. He starts with your imagination and won't stop there. It will become a ripple effect into your family. Have you ever heard someone say, My daddy was an alcoholic, and his daddy was too? Or, So many people in my family tree committed suicide? Why do you think there are so many generational curses, so much sickness, and so much destruction within families? That was never God's intent for our lives. My warning as a watchman on the wall is this. Stay away from these things. The devil doesn't discriminate. The devil doesn't work only in our normal lives or environment. He's after every piece of territory he can get. The devil's plan is that if he can take over the territory, he can control the people. He's out to claim territory or spiritual regions, regardless of status, rich or poor, black or white, famous or obscure. I'll give you one example of this. The devil goes to Hollywood. We watch television celebrities and movie stars and think they're sitting on top of the world. Some of us want to be them. We envy them. We even go so far as to imitate them and look like them. But if people in Hollywood could testify and speak the truth from their hearts, many of them would give anything to switch places with us. If you look deeply into Hollywood, you can see the face of the devil and how he has so many people in his pocket for a season. These people shine like stars, but look again. The stars are falling. They suffer from depression, oppression, suicide, out of control lust, diseases, alcoholism, drug addiction. Many are on so many prescription pills they can't keep track of them anymore. From famous singers to stars of the big screen and small screen, television, somehow, somewhere, they have made a pact with the devil. Some of the most famous Latino singers, for example, have reached the heights of success only to end up in a coffin, to be buried in a cemetery in the Bronx. If I were to name the name of one particular singer, you would know her songs. She sold her life to the occult religion called Centuria. Many others today are on the same route, on a train called Hellbound. And the motorman also has a name. His name is the Devil. So the stars in Hollywood are falling. The Devil knows your neighborhood. Don't let these words scare you, but it's true. The enemy knows your neighborhood. And I don't mean in a Sesame Street type of way. Do you know your neighborhood as a believer in Christ? Demons are assigned to patrol and control your neighborhood, principalities, and junior demons taking orders from them. I want to give you a glimpse into the unseen demonic world. As an ex-demonic evangelist, I know the ins and outs of that world. How Satan strategically plants strongholds in our neighborhoods. And every day we walk by the strongholds and they become the norm to us. Let me name a few of those strongholds in your neighborhood. Mosques, a demonic place where the devil meets with his people. Yet we pass by it every day and brush it off like it's nothing, instead of laying hands on it, cursing it to the root, and removing it. 
These demonic temples are right in our territory where our families live and children play. Many people think Islam is an innocent religion. It is not. We are easily fooled because we see Muslims living their morals and staying faithful to the core of their religion. But what most people don't realize is that the God of Islam is a demon called Allah. These individuals are like sleeper agents until they are pressed to the point to defend their religion. Then they manifest and turn on you and on society. At the car wash where I get my car serviced, 95% of the workers are Muslim. They are very kind and seem to be very genuine. But as soon as I start talking about Jesus Christ as the Son of God, or about radical Islam, or the stuff on the news today, or how if a person leaves Islam, they have a death sentence on their life, and it shouldn't be that way, you should see their reaction. From acting nice and genuine, their features change, and their body language changes, and they start to manifest to another person. Botanicus. The Botanica is another place, another stronghold where people go to get tarot card readings and buy candles to do witchcraft with. Many people think that botanicas are just part of the Spanish culture. No harm, no foul. They couldn't be more mistaken. These shops sell ingredients for the purposes of black magic. And when people get tarot card readings to make contact with dead relatives, what they don't realize is that the relative who shows up is a familiar spirit, a demon that mimics everything about the deceased person. Liquor stores. Liquor stores in our neighborhoods are breaking families up through a spirit of alcoholism. This spirit is destroying families, loved ones, friends, and entire neighborhoods, and we do nothing about it. When was the last time we prayed and took inventory of our own neighborhood and claimed it for Jesus Christ and believed God to turn it around? Nightclubs. Whether they are Latin nightclubs playing Spanish music or R&B or rap music or rock clubs or techno clubs, it's all the devil's playground. The neighborhoods they are located in are under control of spirits of lust, immorality, adultery, alcoholism, drugs, murder. The list is long. You may think you can go out for a night of dancing and innocent fun. Think again. When you head back home, those demons follow you to infiltrate your whole environment. I believe the reason we are put in our neighborhood is to destroy the works of the devil. For that reason, and that reason alone, God has given you a place to reside in that particular neighborhood. Many neighborhoods are under a curse of control by demonic forces, by spirits of murder, suicide, poverty, immorality, adultery, and homosexuality by spirits of insanity that know how to steal your mind, spirits assigned to break up families, spirits of rape, molestation, and so on. This warning goes out to Christians today. Many of us take it upon ourselves to move on our own understanding, either to another state, city, region, or borough. This can be like committing spiritual suicide. We so easily allow the enemy to relocate us. It doesn't matter if it's a high-end neighborhood or a low-income neighborhood. Demons are assigned everywhere. We easily fall into the trap, the trap of the hands of the devil, and become victims instead of being victorious in Christ. We don't pray and seek the heart of God. We don't fast anymore. We don't even inquire if it's God's perfect will for us to move geographically. 
when the devil may be setting us up to fall into his pit of destruction. This does not only affect you, it affects your family too, chipping away at their purpose and destiny. You need to come to see that your purpose and destiny are also lined up with the region and season you are in. The number one danger for a Christian is to move out of God's timing. It's like trying to clap with one hand. Beware of the enemy's plan for your life. God has a plan and purpose for your life, but so does the enemy. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. It is so important for us to pray and hear from God before we make any moves anywhere. The devil is looking for an opportunity to set us up. He knows the dangers of moving out of God's timing. He will seduce you with a better place, better school, better opportunities. But remember, just because something shines and looks good to us, doesn't mean that God is in it. So be careful. Pray before you take your next step. The devil knows how to place you in a neighborhood that you're not prepared for spiritually. The plan he is trying to accomplish is to dismantle you spiritually by placing you in one of his stronghold places or a neighborhood that he controls. He does this to dismantle you and your family to destroy or delay the plan that God has for your life. One of the craziest things I've heard since being a Christian, and the thing that breaks my heart, is what comes out of the mouths of my brothers and sisters in the Lord when they're trying to move to another city or country. They say, I wonder if there are any good schools there, or are there any good shopping areas or buses and trains close by? I've never heard a Christian say, I wonder if there's a Bible-believing church in the area that preaches the Word of God uncompromised. They are not concerned about their purpose or destiny in God or the consequences of eternity. That's when you know the devil is setting you up. Who is seducing you? I believe every person has two doors in their lives. One of the doors is your mind, and the other is your heart. These areas are gateways into your soul. God and the devil are in a battle for the doors of your life. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. Revelation 3.20 Who owns the doors in your life? Ask yourself this question, and be honest. I am offering you a get-out-of-hell-free card. I am asking you with an honest heart to reflect on this question. Where do you want to spend eternity? I want to silence the voice of reasoning in your life. Sad to say, in many churches today, instead of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, people are captured and held hostage by the voice of their reasoning, which is the voice of the devil himself. He holds our minds and thoughts captive in such a way that brings circumstances and consequences to our Christian walk. This makes it difficult to fight the good fight of faith as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. When God gives us a test and we are taking the class, many Christians today, instead of getting an A and passing the test, end up with an incomplete in life. It's like going to college and taking an expensive course, and somewhere in the middle we opt out and settle for and incomplete. A life that's lived in alignment with the scriptures, 
a life of sold-out obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest defense against the evil one. Don't settle for an incomplete. Determine in your heart to go all the way with God. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1, 6. In chapter 3, we'll look at some more examples of these open doors in your life, which the Apostle Paul called the fiery darts of the devil and his cronies. These are the entrapments they use to try to succeed over your life. But first I want to talk about this number one setup. That's the subject of the next chapter. Summary. The craftiness of the devil has trapped fallen humanity and all of modern society in a gross lie. So many people are tied up in the hands of this creature called the devil and they don't even realize it. From our earliest childhood to the end of our lives, if someone doesn't sound the trumpet and point to the cross of Jesus Christ, we are doomed. 